Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart talks about his life. I say, well, shoot, if you talk about his life, man, I got a whole bunch of stories I can talk about. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. But it wasn't until I saw Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart talks about his life. I say, well, shoot, if you talk about his life, man, I got a whole bunch of stories I can talk about. But how could I put him in that, into that comic feel? feel? And then that's what I've been doing. I, I just I left Germany. I went to Germany. Uh, yeah, we talked while you was in Germany. Germany. I Germany. Shoot, I, I, I let it go. See, my thing was I had to start letting loose. I wasn't letting loose. I wasn't being, I wasn't loose. Yeah. I was too trying to be nice structured. guy, trying to be structured, trying to be this. I said, I got to let it loose. When wow. I let it loose, them jokes is coming. Kevin Hart is a different animal when it come down to just being himself and talking about his family too and doing his thing right. and, and you see his whole layout and in, in, in the way his comedy came he had some downfalls before his peak and that helps too right like because like yeah, yeah. nobody didn't expect him to be the Kevin Hart years a day when I talked to Faze on Love he was like you talking about Blackfoot you know he was just a dude that was around you know well, ask you about Kevin Hart did you ever think from where he started because you seen him from the jump mm -hmm. and to where he is now that he would be able to make that conversion and just spike. I don't think Kevin was going to be sh Cause you remember how it was when he first started to, what's the I used to tease, why? I used to tease Kevin like my little brother and I love him he's the same Kevin I was like Kevin <laughs> I told you how we met no you didn't mm -hmm. I didn't tell you how we no. met no I I did a show a movie called Blue Crush okay with a big producer named Brian Grazer mm -hmm. and um he was like, man, Faze, you need a TV show. I said, oh, damn, I, yeah, I would love a TV show. This is one of the biggest producers yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. We sitting on the beach. He said, you know, we're going to do a TV show with you. I said, no shit. He said, when we get back to L.A., call me. I'm like, okay. I smoke a cigar. I'm like, whatever, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Brian Grager. He's so cool. I'm like, okay. Get back to L.A. I get a call. Didn't I tell you to call me? <laughs> I said, well, oh, I said, you were serious? He said, yeah, mother I'm serious. He said, come to my office next week. I go to his office, and, um, uh, you know, come in the office, um, I pre the, the, the producer, oh, I can't believe I forgot his name, really, he's running one of the, he's running the studio right now. Really good guy, um, damn it. Anyway, so I go to his office, I'm sitting in the office and um, this little black dude come in and say, hey, what's up, man? I'm like, hey, what's up? You want a Coke or something? I said, yeah, yeah, I'll give a Coke. <laughs> Brings out Coke. Kevin brings a Coke. Then he sits down. I'm thinking he's an office worker or something. Right. Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Brought you a Coke. <laughs> right? He sits down and other people come in. And Brian comes, hey, you met Kevin. I'm like, yeah, the coke boy. You, did you say that? Yeah. He goes, see, you guys look at it. He's a little different Kevin. This is little black Kevin, little black feet. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. And I'm, you know. Uh, Kevin Hart worked hard, and he learned from Dane Cook for highest marketing is concerned. Yeah. And uh, he took a chance on himself for as going to uh, clubs. You know, I, I read the story. I got his books. I mean, I, I read all of them. I bought Chris Rock's book, Bernie Mac's book, uh, Sid's book, Deal. But I buy. I mean, I buy books and I read. I support them. They don't know I'm supporting them. Yeah. But I support they them. They know I, now. I, you know, I don't. You know, I, I support them. I don't say. I don't say very much. They all, a lot of comedians put me down and certain things, but I don't say much, man. No. I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing to prove to That's nobody. Good. That's Cause good. Because I, I, I did what I had to do. My name still rings for supreme, but oh, it's good or bad. Because Chuck and Duggan mean disappointment or excitement. So you go if. You you go talk to me on the bad side, you got me. Talk on the good side, you got me. Let me ask you about the Apollo I was going a while ago. Uh, just to get back to, did you, What I know Jamie Foxx used to be around that every now and then. Did you ever run into Jamie when you was there? No, I saw Jamie at the comedy store, but I didn't, 
you know, not, uh, you know, just passing by. Passing not, by. Not, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but the reason I say that because at that Apollo, it was, um, I mean, did you go on as a act or, or did you get booed or was it? No, you, I didn't get booed. You I, did I went go on, on as an act. I was okay. As a, as a, as a, uh, Special comedian. As a special comedian. Yeah. Okay, there you Steve go. Steve Harvey so, got me on there as so a special comedian. So when you comedian. when you came out, how was the energy, and how many times did you even do the Apollo? I did the Apollo one time. Okay. It was good. It was good. I mean, I was just bit, I was just myself. I just I was just myself, and it did I did good. I yeah. mean, I did. I, just, I the, the the tape is on on my Facebook page. It's on my YouTube channel. But how was it? How was it when you come out there? What what made New York and that whole situation? different than what you'd ever face. A lot of times we're afraid of New York because we think New York is a hard people uh, and things of that nature. Now I was kind of concerned about it being in New York because it's shucky ducky. I said, oh man, they're going to think I'm country and all that kind of fun. I found them jokers just as country as we are. Yeah. Some of the people come from Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, you know, so the, uh, they up in uh, up in New York. So they really enjoyed you know what I did. I mean, they had, uh, they had good. And matter of fact, when I left the Apollo that night I performed, Tina Graham was there. She said, "Well, they got a club. They got a club over here called across from Apollo called the Perk Club, the Perkins Club, or something yeah. like that." We Perkins were just Club. in New York yeah. when I called you, yeah. and I, we was over there by there. It was a Perkins Club, and so they had a comedy night that night. And I just came off this high of being at the Apollo, and there was some gangsters in there, hey. and uh, they were saying, uh, "This gangster put up. This, I got a hundred dollars. Somebody can make me laugh because ain't nobody made them laugh all night. Hundred dollars. You put it up." I walked out there with that hundred dollars in my pocket. <laughs> oh man, that's good stuff. So you wasn't playing no games with them uh, because I had the joy of comedy. It wasn't it was just having fun with it. I wasn't in the competition with people. I just like to have fun and tell my jokes. And I learned the way of phrasing the jokes from the comedy class. Okay. Okay. Now, now you're trying to bring black experience into it. See, because I wasn't a comedian that goes deep to, to sexual. Or two talking about white people and this all in. I wasn't that type of comedian. So in that era, Def Jam was an era of bam in your face type of a comedy. wasn't no intellectual type of a comedy. It wasn't comedy you got to think. If you got to think about the comedy in the black clubs, they ain't don't want to hear that. Did you you was you was on BET Comic View? I did Comic View. What was what was that like dealing with BET and dealing with you know that whole setup that they had arranged for that programming? That was that was that was that was that was really good. I mean, matter of fact, like I said, I got the comedians um, from Dallas to get on uh, a Comic View. But how was it? Did they did they they just filmed it here and broadcasted it, or did they, you have to first, go somewhere? How what, was it? Well, they they filmed the well, the the one that they did, they filmed all the people here when I okay. gave the straws. So they they showed little clips from the Vukure type of thing. Okay. Then they started the contest. Okay. DL was getting ready to leave. I think DL was getting ready, suing them. They had a problem with DL, or DL had a problem with them, and so they was getting ready to uh, DL was going to uh, go. So in order for them to come up with a host, they did the contest, mm. and so Cedric became that uh, became the new host of Comic View, and then so I just got into the contest just for. Exposure of uh, Chuck and Chuck and you always on this. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I was just going. I got. I just wanted to get the exposure. I didn't want to win nothing. I because I knew what my material was. I, I couldn't just go that name out. I was just getting the name out. That's all it was. Yeah, we on Boss Talk One One. Yeah, we gonna talk.